Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Don the Kraken Wid, and uh, this is going to be a short um, building up to my next Victorian Greyjoy uh, video. Um, this is a short called uh, The Dragon and the Kraken. And uh, it's specifically about one chapter in particular. It's Daenerys's first chapter in A Storm of Swords. And um, I think it's just a big chapter. Well, it's not that big of a chapter, but it's all foreshadowing. It sets a wonderful story of Daenerys, of what she's doing, where she's at, where she's going. But context, I believe, is foreshadowing. And so, um, first off, we find her... Uh, it seems like that she's having a little bit of stormy weather to where um, it says no squall could frighten Danny. So she considers herself Daenerys Stormborn. Now, so she's. Danny is finding herself pretty comfortable on the ocean, on boats and whatnot. She says that she had crossed the narrow sea half a hundred times sailing away from the usurper or one-upping his uh, ships that are you know, tracking her down. Daenerys also says that she finds this makes her feel free, you know, and I think that that's, that's a good feeling for Daenerys because she's probably never felt free. She's always been a queen. She's always been in rule, you know, well, not always been a queen, you know, uh, of course, under the rule of her brother, you know, but when she took over with her dragons and everything, it's like, when did Daenerys have some free time to feel that everything was okay? She's probably had some sort of impending doom, you know, over her head, like this little rain cloud that just followed her around, or at least that's, that's how I had felt for Daenerys, you know, so it makes sense for her to say that when she is traveling and on boats that she actually feels free. She said that she loved the sharp, salty smell of the ocean. It, it makes sense to me. Like, da Daenerys is finally free. She can see the world. She can do whatever she wants. She doesn't have to raise this army or, or that army or conquer this continent or this realm and things of that nature. But with all of that being said, I think that that is a slight foreshadowing for the future books to come, considering that there's one man in particular that is trying as hard as he can to wed her. And his name is, of course, Victorian Greyjoy. And uh, when she says that she's sailing and wants to be, you know, free, and uh, she imagines the life of a sailor, she fantasizes um, about being a sailor and seeing the world. So, uh, two things right there just, just really make sense to me. I'm like, she wants to sail, she wants to see the world, you know, so, and um, she smells, you know, uh, the sea and everything. It's it's totally just foreshadowing Victorian Greyjoy, in in my eyes. So that's uh, that's number one. Also, I want to note that this is a chapter of foreshadowing, and there is a particular section to where. Uh, Rhaegal and Viserion are hanging back and Drogon is, is gone and he's missing. You know, like they're hanging out with, you know, Mama Mama Dragon and everything, but Drogon is nowhere to be seen. So that's a just a little bit foreshadowing. So um, the second point is uh, Danny is talking to Jorah about how big can her dragons get and he tells her of lore and things in history get big enough to where they can literally pluck krakens from the sea so in my mind that's uh that's the second 
reference to Victorian Greyjoy in this video. Now, Jorah goes on to say that there's also even greater tales of wiser dragons um, that have lived forever, you know, that are, he calls them wise old dragons. <laughs> so, um, there is talk about Jorah Mormont. Um, Daenerys is talking about uh, proceeding further with uh, the ships and whatnot, and Jorah straight up says, hey, we cannot sail through old Valyria, even though that's your homeland, for fear that Krakens will drag you down. And so, in my mind, that's, that's the third reference to a Victorian Greyjoy, and I, I know a, a lot of people are going to say, well, what about Euron? And um, I'm going to cross the Euron-Victorian uh, boundary a little bit later. Um, people ask me a lot of stuff about that in the comments, you know, and a lot of people say they're like, oh, Euron's my favorite character, you know, and like I, I just really have to bite my tongue sometimes because I have a lot to say about Euron. I like Euron, you know, as a Greyjoy. Um he's a completely different character than Victorian and has completely different motives. I haven't stomped out Euron. Uh, I just want to clarify that to some people. I haven't, um, I'm not neglecting him as a character and I'm taking all of his, uh, things into consideration as well. Uh, it just takes me a little bit of time to really solidify um, what I think is going to happen with my favorite characters in my favorite house. So, bear with me. We have, right there that I've pointed out, three different characteristics of mentioning of a um, sailor, pirate, kraken, kraken, you know, kind of theme with Danny. Um... Me personally, I think that there's four different references for this same scenario. Either a um, Victorian or Greyjoy or, you know, at sea kind of theme. Um, I have a uh, task for anybody that actually made it this far in the video. Go back and reread Daenerys, her first chapter and a storm of swords and tell me if you can come up with a fourth foreshadowing of the dragon and the kraken also i want to bring up um how this chapter like i said is a giant foreshadowing chapter now jorah tells danny um or he convinces her and she didn't necessarily agree at this point, but he convinced her to go to Astapor to go and pick up the Unsullied. And he tells her a story. He tells her a story of the Unsullied at uh, Kohar. Q-O-H-O-R. And there was 3,000 Unsullied versus 20,000 Dothraki riders. And moral of the story is uh, the Unsullied one. It's an excellent excellent story of a war that Jorah tells. Please go back and read this chapter and tell me what you think. It, it won't take you 15 minutes. I promise. Just read the damn thing and then come back and let me know what you think. But I think that this is a reference to um, maybe uh, what we know as 300 or the Spartans in the Battle of Thermopylae. And I think that him telling this story right here is a foreshadowing of what if we have the Horn of Joramun that brings down part of the wall. So it's of Night's Watchmen versus the Wildlings and or White Walkers. So I, of course, I believe that history is bound to repeat itself throughout this story. So I think you can go ahead and take that story and apply it to the wall up north just in case they blow the horn. That's how that, that little fight is going to go down. I, there's no way that horn can bring down the entire wall. It's just going to compromise a little section of it. And 
a little section is actually a big section, but not enough to bring down the, the whole wall. You know what I'm saying. Let me know what you think. Uh, this entire chapter is one big foreshadowing chapter. Um, please go back and uh, give it just 10, 15 minutes and then uh, come back and let me know what you think. Alright, since uh, Season 5 has launched, um, I've gained a lot of new subscribers, and I thank you guys for uh, coming and, you know, subbing to my channel and checking my stuff out. It, it means a lot, and um, comment if you can, and uh, let me know what you think. Um, I want to give a big thanks uh, to LT Giles, definitely, buddy. Thank you for uh, making those for review videos with me and uh, we do have it planned after every episode we're gonna try to do it as soon as we can to uh, share our initial thoughts and reactions um i just want to talk to you guys uh about the dragon and the kraken let me know what you think go back and reread that chapter and come back and talk to me and uh let me know what you think um the next video that I have to do before I continue into my Victorian video is I believe that uh, Melisandre and the Red Priest and the Red God of R'hllor, I fully wholeheartedly believe that their religion is good and I believe that they mean good in the story and so it rolls into how Victorian has Makuro on his side. So, hang in there, everybody. Love you guys. Thank you much. Bye.